In photos from Abu Ghraib, I am the man with the bag on his head. In those photos, the bodies that look like mine are scrambling over each other naked, cuffed to railings, forced to masturbate when a military specialist points, strapped by the fingers to electrodes, punched or placed between stretchers and sat on, or blindfolded and cowering to the barks of military dogs they can't see. For years, I have tried to locate myself in those photos, brown and American, pledging allegiance to a nation that tortures under the pretense of patriotism, sending support overseas, blind to the oppressive reality. In photos from Abu Ghraib, I am the man with the bag on his head and the woman with her foot on his back, grinning like a rabid dog. My body is everybody there, white American and soft brown, flesh without face, worship without belief. How long can you grin at the back of a head on your boot? For years, I have been told that a white body is more of a body than my own. In primary school, we first learned to celebrate Columbus Day. The most popular crayon is the peach one, which you're, we are told to draw ourselves with. We have piled it down to a stub. In our books, a rule of habit says the main character either has rosy cheeks or is a mouse. <laughs> uh, my dad referred to my friend Elliot as that Asian boy, and it is years before I realized that my friend's parents must have been calling me the same. Their teeth must have been seething with the word brown. In high school, the two-class history curriculum on South Asia is a stack of bad jokes about sacred cows and the caste system. Being white in upstate New York is every ad in every store, every body at the supermarket, every way of doing things the way you're expected to. And being brown is a fumbled apology of mispronounced words. Being brown is wishing your skin lighter, is your sister telling you we're not safe in this country. Everywhere, voices were barking like dogs, telling us we didn't belong, though we didn't know how to look them in the eye. How does one say a TV show character who is Indian, who is either behind the counter at a convenience store or nose deep in, nose deep in books, is the reason I am not safe here? How does one say I feel betrayed that the Boston bomber is white enough for the cover of Rolling Stone magazine, white enough for sympathy because no one would say for a body that looks like mine, where did this poor American kid go wrong? I believed that whiteness was a feature I could inherit. But despite every effort, every pronunciation traded out, every joke I allowed myself to laugh along with, every cry shoved away, upon waking it was there like a star stitched to the sleeve, the color of washed turmeric on the skin, the stain that just doesn't come off. Every morning I believed it would be different, but you step into the future and that hallucinated reality just cracks open. And you realize the entire time you're here, you're asking for permission to be, to needle this America to your skin and fit in. America, I cannot claim to understand what those detainees at Abu Ghraib have been through. But what you have done to their bodies, you have done to mine and to my race. America, I have not stopped being angry. I have not stopped feeling fear. I cannot stop asking, is this what my body is to you? America, for years I thought the only way, for years I did not understand how to be a part of you while holding down the brown of my body. I thought the only way in was to the only way in was to talk myself out of my race. America, what can I call myself if not American? To be part of you is to be in camo. It is the violence of trying to hide a body that will not fit and that will never do. Thanks.